Hello and what is going on? I'm El Director. This is El Director Vision, and you're watching Indie Rebel Hollywood Effects Without the Hollywood Budget. Today we're going to take a look at, uh, well, I'll just show you here. This is going to be the final result that we're going to make. And I will loop it a few times. So we have my wife uh, standing out along a river, and it is snowing out. Now, ideally, uh, we would want to shoot this on location, but for whatever reason, we were not able to. And so we ended up shooting this on the lovable, wonderful green screen. And this is what the original shot looked like straight out of my Blackmagic Ursa Mini 4K. Um, so it's a log image. And so we need to figure out how to work with a log image while we're doing our compositing here inside of Fusion. And then we also are going to deal with, you know, compositing, um, adding snow elements into our shot. If we look right here, we can see I've got the snowfall that I used here in Fusion. Uh, with a particle system and rather than actually build this from scratch I'm going to show you a really easy cheat uh, that will allow you to add this instantly into any of your shots and then uh, we do a little bit of color correction and film convert and all that good stuff and this ends up being the final result so let's watch it again it's looking very very nice and we can see we've got snow going behind her and in front of her we've got a pretty decent key and we also simulated wind as you can see if you're looking at her hair here you can see that the wind is going. Um, so we'll talk about kind of how we shot it first, and then we'll take a look at doing the effect. All right, so when we shot this in the studio, I actually originally uh, was shooting with both of my cameras. This right here is the version from my Canon Rebel T2i, and then of course we've got the one from the Ursa Mini. Um, and it's the exact same shot, she's doing the exact same thing because they were both recording simultaneously as you can see uh, right here with this behind the scenes. And it actually worked out pretty good. But as we can see, there are some drastic differences in the way uh, the log recording works. On the T2i, I was us using the Vision Color Picture Styles. I use CineLook when I'm exposing and lighting my shot. And then I use um, Vision Tech or Vision Color for the actual recording. And you can see how that flips on and off right here. With the Ursa Mini, it's all built into it. Um, it allows me to record in log, but preview the entire time in the Rec. 709 color space, or video color space, which is actually really cool. So you could do this either way, and uh, maybe if we have time, we'll take a look at the end of actually keying this T2i footage and show you how that looks. But for right now, what I want to do is I want to take a look at our actual shot from the Blackmagic Ursa Mini 4K. So here is a nice frame from the shot. She's looking up longingly at the snow falling on her. First thing we need to do is get this back into a log color space for working. And in Fusion, there is a viewing LUT that we can turn on right here. This feature also exists inside of Resolve. You can see I've got that same uh, viewer LUT thing up here. And if I actually had media coming in, I'd be able to toggle that. But we're gonna do that here inside of Fusion. I've already pre-configured mine with my uh, camera LUT that actually I had on camera while we were shooting. So if we just toggle this on and off, there we go. And we can see that definitely adds a lot more color and the image is a lot more saturated and a little bit more punchy. So that's what we wanna start working with here for our king. Cool, all right, now the next thing we wanna do is create a garbage mask. We can see that we got the edge of my green screen in the shot over here. So let's go ahead and just garbage mask this out. We're just gonna add a polygon and we can come around do 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 and close it off just like that there it goes and now let's go ahead and add our keyer i'm just going to use the delta keyer and we'll pull that out here and the first thing i want to do is actually add my garbage mat into the shot and we can see this bottom gray triangle right here is my garbage mat so i'm going to hook that up to that polyline and if we view the delta keyer oh no it's not working well, we need to invert the poly polygon. So let's go and click on the polygon. Come over here and click on invert. Now we're rocking. With the Delta Keyer back active, we're just gonna grab the eyedropper. And to do the keying, all we have to do is actually click and drag over the image. We can see now we're keying out different parts. So unlike After Effects, where we would uh, 
go ahead and like click the eyedropper and then come in here and click part of the shot, we can see it doesn't work. So if you're coming from After Effects, that might throw you. We're going to click and drag the eyedropper and select the shade of green that we want. Now if we look up here at the top, we can see these three circles and this is the color channels that we're viewing. If I just quickly toggle this, I can now see my alpha channel and I can flip over to the matte options and really just kind of finesse the key out a little bit. I'm trying to crunch these things as little as possible. We want to maintain as much detail as we can in the image and that's looking really nice. Toggle that back to the color channels and we're good to go. The keying is done. Now let's go and composite this on top of our background image. So I have this shot right here I took with my drone of the St. Mary's River over in St. Mary's, Idaho, where I used to live. And uh, to go ahead and merge our shot on top of it, drag the output of one onto the output of the other. And if we take a look, we can see that we now have a composite and it's looking really good. And the edges are looking pretty nice too. We can see we've got a lot of nice hair detail going on and then that kind of thing. We'll see if we get the same kind of detail later on with the T2i. Uh, let's go ahead and scale the shot down and position it where we want it to be. Select the Delta key here and just add a transform node right after it. Now we can come in and adjust the scale and put her where we want her to be. Maybe set off to the side here. That looks really nice. And now we can also add some color correction. Select the transform, add the color corrector. And let's go ahead and blue her down a little bit to kind of start to match the rest of the shot. And we can see now we're kind of playing in those same kind of color tones. I might even want to come into the shadows and add a little bit more blue just to the shadows, just like that. And uh, I'd say that's starting to match in really good. Now you can see my lighting is a little bit off. We tried to simulate like we were lighting outdoors and what I should have done is had more of a, a big white top light coming in, but instead I chose to give her just the edge. Um, but it still looks okay, and if you're doing like a stylized music video or Sin City, this should still look really nice. Now what we want to do is go ahead and add in our snowfall. And this is where it gets really, really easy. I'm just going to give myself a little bit of room down here. And if we go up to File, Bins, we get this cool bit of Fusion templates. And there's like all sorts of cool backgrounds and other generators. But if we go down to this one that says Particles, check this out. Down here at the bottom, there is snow. We can drag snow into our composition, close this out, and let's just go and take a look at this particle setup here for just a second before we look at merging it in. I'm gonna click on the render and view that. And if we wanna help speed things up, turn off the high quality, go back to the beginning and hit play, and we can see we've got snow coming down. And if we wanted to do this in high quality, we could turn on high quality, start playing it, and we can see we've got some actual really nice snowflakes and snowfall coming into the shot. Play from the beginning. Good motion. It's looking really nice. One thing we will need to do is to adjust the amount of snow for the length of the shot. And we do that here in the P emitter. So go and click on the emitter. And then we can come over to the lifespan and choose how long we want this to be. So in my case, I need yeah, a few hundred more frames, so we're going to make it like 520, and that you can see will get me through the shot no problem, especially as we get here into the later stuff. So now what we can do, let's go ahead and grab this, and uh, just to make things easy, we'll go and throw it into an underlay, so we can keep track of things, and we'll make the underlay blue, because it's the snow, and that kind of gives me like that snowy vibe. And what I want to do now is actually merge my snowfall behind the shot of my actress. So I'm going to grab the output and stick that now over the background. And we can see that now the snow is going behind her. Now it doesn't quite fit, so let's go ahead and add a transform node as well. And we'll go and get this one kind of coming off here to the side just so we can help kind of keep track of things. And go ahead and just scale that up. to about where I want it to be like that. Now we're gonna do the same thing after the fact to put snow in front of her. So I'm gonna drag over to my final merge, get my merge in line, let's go ahead and view it. We can see here it is. Let's go and add another transform node. And we'll just go ahead and drop it in line like that. Scale it up. And because this is foreground snow, I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger, like it's closer to camera. And then I might even try to offset it a little bit. So 
I'm not having the same snow at the same point in time in the same part of the shot. We're just trying to disguise what we're doing here. Maybe even pull it down a little bit like that. And that looks really nice. Finally, what we want to do is we want to start blurring out parts of the image, start creating some depth of field. So what I want to do is come into where my snow joins the background and I'm going to add a blur node, just like that. And maybe increase this up just a little bit, ever so slightly, not too much. I'm also going to add a blur after my foreground snow. So I'm going to come in with my foreground snow transform selected because I want it to go after the transform but before it gets merged. And we'll add the blur in right there. And we'll blur that out a little bit too. Not too much, okay? And you can see that's actually looking really, really nice. So let's go ahead and preview what we have. All right, we'll just look at that small section here. And we can see that's looking quite nice. And we got the snow coming down. My king's looking really good. The wind in her hair is looking nice. I like how that's looking. And uh, that's really all there is to doing a shot like this. You can finish it up by dragging in like film convert nitrate to the end and really dialing in the, the look of how you want it to be. But um, it's not that difficult. Keying inside of Fusion is extremely easy. You can see we're just using you know the Delta keyer over here for that. And we've got our um, garbage mask selection on there as well. And if we turn the keyer on and off, you know, that's what we're doing. And we're getting a really, really nice key. I mean, you can look at the, the her hair up here on top. And she's getting a little bit of a haircut, but it's not bad at all. We could obviously spend a lot more time tweaking it, but I think for most effect shots, that's going to be more than passable. So what I want to do now is take a look at the T2i footage and ask ourselves, will this key the same? All right, look at this. You can see the, the more inside of her hair because that camera just can't resolve that kind of detail. And the image overall is quite a bit softer too. So let's find that same kind of thing where she's looking up. Right about here. And we'll do the exact same thing. So this time though, I'm gonna turn off my viewer light. I don't wanna work with that. And let's go ahead and add that Delta keyer again. And we'll view it. And let's go ahead and key it. Flip to the alpha and compress the mat as little as possible. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at that. Turn the alpha back off. And I can see that that's looking, you know, not too bad. Let's just do the composite without worrying about the um, snowfall for now. But we'll just go ahead and drag this. Let's see, I'll disconnect for now from there. Merge on top, keep things clean. There we go. And then we will transform it down. Just like before. And then we'll add a color corrector to her. That's not too shabby right there. Let's go back into our shadows. We'll do kind of the same thing here. Maybe something about like that. And if we go ahead and play this, we can see it, it's not bad. Even for the compressed crappy T2i footage, it's a little fuzzy over here in certain parts. We can see that um, the the hair's just got a lot more noise in it and such. And that's you know also why you might want to run it through Film Convert afterwards. In fact, just for fun, let's go ahead and drop that in and run it through our Film Convert. Take a look. There we go. Check that out. As soon as you add that film grain on top, everything just kind of all blends together. And you can see the shot looks Actually, not too bad. That looks pretty nice. The grain's a bit ex um, exaggerated right now, but if we blew this up to 100%, there we go. It's actually looking really, really good, and it might be just the look that you're going for. Let's go and watch that in full motion. So there you go. That is a look at King inside of Fusion. Um, you could also do this, of course, inside the Fusion page in Resolve as well. And, uh, you know, we did it with both really bad T2i footage. Ooh, bad shot there, babe. There you go. Really bad T2i footage. We also did it with really nice Ursa Mini footage. 
and we can see that we get acceptable results with both. If you shot the entire movie on a T2i, I guarantee that no one's going to notice that this was shot on the green screen at that point. If you go ahead and just kind of follow this basic principle, this basic workflow of get your lighting right on set. If you look at that screen, this is very evenly lit. And uh, maybe I'll do another behind the scenes video on how I light for my green screen. But keeping that screen even like that is going to be key, no pun intended, to getting a good key out of it. So I hope you guys have enjoyed and gotten something out of this. If you got any questions, let me know down in the comments below. I'm L Director. This is L Director Vision, and you've been watching Indie Rebel Hollywood Effects without the Hollywood budget. We'll see you next time.